Hello everyone, let me tell you, making chicharrones en salsa verde lets you experience the texture and flavor between the pork rinds in a delicious earthy green sauce is a match made in heaven. <laughs> and we're making it today. Let's get started with that delicious sauce and I've already roasted two poblano peppers. You've seen me do this plenty of times. All I did was roast them over a comal, medium heat, and just flip them, turn them around until they have blackened and blistered on all sides. Then transfer them into a bowl, cover them with plastic wrap, and allow them to sweat for about 10 minutes. These are ready to go. And I do like to keep that plastic wrap, so when I peel those peppers, I can just place the skin over the plastic wrap. Just go all around, making sure you get as much of that skin that loosened up, and whatever you cannot get to, it is fine. Cut them open and remove the seeds and the stem. Close that wrap and get rid of all the scraps. Place a medium saucepan over medium to medium low heat. Heat a couple of tablespoons of a good oil. And you know I like to use avocado oil. Roughly dice half of a white onion. No need for perfection here. Just make sure that they're uniform in size. That oil's still not hot, so we're gonna peel five garlic cloves. Let's put that to the side. And I just like to give them a quick smash. Onion and garlic go in into that hot oil. Oh yes, that's what we wanna hear, a nice sizzle. Get them coated in that oil. All right, we also want to add one pound of already cleaned, rinsed tomatillos. For this sauce, I like to use chiles de arbol because those are the flavors that take me back home, although it does change the color a little bit, but that's okay because I think it's completely worth it. Now, if you decide to keep that vibrant green color, you can use serranos or even jalapenos, and you would just add them whole right in with all of these ingredients. After a few minutes, we have this beautiful, light, kind of golden brown color. They are halfway cooked. I'm gonna add a quarter of a teaspoon of a whole cumin. And the five chiles de arbol. I did remove the seeds from them to kind of reduce the heat because they are hot. But you can do less or even more if you want it spicier. Just toast these ingredients for about a minute continue stirring because you don't want those peppers to burn. We just need both the cumin and the peppers to get toasty because it's gonna release those essential oils and deepen those flavors. Time for the chicken broth. This is two cups of low sodium. At this point, allow it to reach a gentle simmer. Turn up the heat and cover the pot and let the tomatillos soften in the hot broth. It's gonna take about 10 minutes which is also going to allow everything to cool down before it gets blended. Let's talk chicharrones. There's two kinds you can use for this recipe. I personally like to mix and match. You have the kind that has a little bit of meat in them and then you have the more crunchy ones without any meat. I do have one pound of chicharrones con carne with meat and five ounces without it. Let's take these ones and cut them into smaller pieces. Sounds so good. They are really good. We got these at our local Mexican store. They typically have a great selection. I'm just cutting these into small bite-sized pieces. Just a little piece. Oh my goodness, the privilege of being the cameraman. <laughs> you know, some people are starting to put in requests for your job as a camera person. Oh no, I think it was knife sharpening. <laughs> <laughs> they wanted to take on that job in order to get a taste of our food. I would too. Hey, I'm honored that you would want to taste my food actually. For the other type of chicharrones, I just like to give them a light crack because I don't want really small pieces. So I'm just gonna go kind of like that. Be careful and I am using a meat mallet. You can also do this by hand. They're not too hard. But I find that the rough edges can really hurt your fingers, so I'd rather not. Just a light tap. Take care of it. Mm -hmm. 
In a blender, add in both of those poblanos. Ooh. Add these into the blender as well. Broth and everything. Now cover and blend until it is completely smooth. And broken down. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> I'm just telling you, it's nice to have a number one fan here in my own kitchen. Oh wait, hold on. We're not there yet. See, you distracted me. We need half a bunch of cilantro. That's where the herbaceous part comes from. Right. Yes. Now we can blend. Beautiful. Place a large pan over medium heat and add the chicharrones con carne. Stir them in. You really just want them to heat back up again. And what's gonna happen is they're gonna begin to release their oils. If you grab them, you can already kind of see it and feel it. And once they do, that same fat is gonna help us kind of lightly fry the sauce. After three minutes, you're gonna start to smell them. And also note that you're not gonna get a ton of fat. It's just gonna kind of get glossy at the bottom, letting you know it's ready for that sauce. You hear that? Exactly what we want. That was the sound of excitement. Yes, and I did lower the heat to medium low so we wouldn't burn those chicharrones while they were sauteing. I'm gonna do a couple of sprigs of epazote. This herb right here is so good. It adds so much flavor to our dishes, but it's potent. So try not to add a whole ton of them. This has now reached a gentle simmer Add the rest of the chicharrones. Get them well coated in that sauce. And I'm still at medium low. Oh, this is looking amazing. The crunchiness with the sauce is now starting to combine and make that harmony we talked about at the beginning. Cover and let them cook for about 10 minutes or until those chicharrones soften and absorb some of that sauce. This is ready and this looking marvelous. Feel free to remove the epazote leaves if that's what you like. I don't mind them so they're staying in. Just do salt to taste because those chicharrones already have salt in them. So definitely taste the sauce and see how much it needs. Make sure everything is well combined and you are ready to serve. Accompany it with some Mexican white rice frijoles de la olla in this case i'm using chatino black beans all the way from oaxaca mexico these are heirloom and i'll leave you the link to the product down in the description area just in case you're interested mm. look i cannot at, wait for you look at you mm. starting without me this is so 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 good let me mm. try it i just love Chicharrones and salsa verde. It's such an easy meal. I grew up having it. I love it. pasote too. You know, I must say we don't make it enough times. Ah. I wish we could eat this like almost every day. I right? know, right? <laughs> but we have to have some control. Mm -hmm. But when we have it, we enjoy mm. it because it is so good. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm. I didn't mention this earlier because I guess I forgot, but the reason why I sauteed all of the ingredients for the sauce is because I wanted it to be kind of mm. creamy. And then we would get the roasted flavor from the poblano and that's exactly what we achieved. It has a subtle creaminess that's just so good. This is so good. I know. You don't have to tell me. Wow. Mm. Mm -hmm. You've had them both ways, chiles de árbol and jalapeño. What do you think? Give us your take on it. Chiles de árbol. I think so too. Yes, because the tomatillos are already um, giving you that green grassy flavor. Like tanginess? Yeah. Then you get a different type of flavor from the... I feel it's like a, like a subtle sweetness 
from the chile de arbol. It's not so grassy anymore. Mm -hmm. So you get kind of like a really nice balance. Right. I will share this plate, but there's no way. <laughs> Make it at home, everybody. Bye. Mm. There you go, stealing my tortilla. Just a little piece. <laughs>